Hey, so we're here with Brandon Barash, and we are about to go downstairs for his solo fan event. Uh, what did you guys do in Boston yesterday? I understand you flew in early yesterday morning. What we did not do was sleep. We definitely didn't do that. We got that out of the way on the plane. Um, we tuned around Harvard Square, which I love. We wanted to go to my favorite burger joint, which I guess had a fire, so they're closed. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so it was a little kink in those plans. But uh, yeah, we walked around there. We walked around Faneuil Hall, and uh, my sister goes to college here, so we walked around campus and just had a leisurely day. Took a lot of pictures. Nice. Yeah. Now, are you from this area? Is that why you're familiar with it, or you just have visited? No, my my sister goes to school here, and I've just been here a couple of times on vacation. So. All right. I understand it was your birthday yesterday. Did you get to do anything it, it fun was. for it? Yeah, my uh, my co-stars took me out last night to dinner and uh, to this great lounge here. So great, it, great. Was, it was a lot of fun, as you can probably see on my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, this uh, have you had a solo fan event, or is this going to be your first one? My first solo fan event was at Fan Club Weekend. Okay. Now, do so, you like doing that more? Is it more intimate since it's one-on-one? -on -one, or I definitely like it. I like to get to know my fans. Uh, I like them to get to know me because I I'd like to think I'm a little different than the character I play on TV. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, <laughs> Yes, I definitely prefer the solo fan events. Right. Yeah. Now, they wrote a whole, they basically wrote a whole car, uh, family around your character. How did that feel to have a whole bunch of crazy people introduced for you? Well, it, it definitely made me think a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's fantastic. It was, you know, it's been such a blessing to walk into this part and to think from the beginning, you know, it's going to last a month or two, and then all of a sudden I've got a family, and it's... Uh, it's pretty wacky. It's it's definitely a welcome surprise. Great. Yeah. I know you're new to the whole soap uh, world. Yes. You had, uh, how have the fan reaction been to Johnny and Johnny and Lulu? Well, I'm still on the show, so I think I think the reaction's been good. The uh, the loyalty is always a shocker to me, and it uh, very rarely goes into a very strange place. Mm -hmm. But it's so nice to have so many people on my side rooting for me rooting for my character rooting for you know the relationship that Julie and I portray and it's um it's a very welcome I uh my girlfriend's mother heads up one of their offices and it's it's always been a charity that has been important to me not because of any personal experience or loss but awareness needs to be raised and the cause definitely needs to be supported so you know it gets to a point where you reach a certain, I guess, success, and you gotta give back. You know, it's it's only right. All right so, thank you. You're ready to go down for your. I'm ready. All right. Bring it. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Brandon, happy birthday to you. Thank you. I love your t-shirt. Wow. Look at that. Stand up, show everybody t-shirt. <laughs> Awesome, thank you very much. If you see me smiling this weird crooked smile, it's not you, it's me. I got my lips split open on set and we'll leave it at that. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was an accident with a prop. There, there's no, no animosity anywhere. But, so if you see me making weird faces and pictures that we pose for later, it's not you, it's me. So. <laughs> um, first of all, again, thank you everybody for coming out. This is such a treat to be able to spend the morning with you and um, to see this room so full is definitely overwhelming. Hi. Who has crutches? I What'd you do? I had surgery. You did. That's yes. right. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. Gina. Gina. Yeah. Gina. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's all coming back to me. It's nine o'clock. Good morning. <laughs> My coffee cup is still full, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make this journey together. So, all right. Awesome. Should we start this Q&A? Uh, how do we want to do this? <laughs> you just want to, yeah, what's up? Hi. Good morning. First of all, I, I'm not a big mob fan of the show, okay. but I have to say that I truly enjoy watching you on screen. 
Thank you. And I'm curious if you, I mean, I know that a lot of people say that they'd love it if you turned out to be a Lansing. Yes, that, uh, that sentiment has definitely been shared and I think it would be a very interesting twist of fate for the uh, for the Zakars if they ended up realizing that it was Johnny Lansing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it would be it would definitely be a good twist. It would be a welcome twist and it would I think make the canvas very interesting. So I agree. Yeah. Who else has something to say? <laughs> you guys aren't that shy. Yes, is it uh, uh, I forgot your name. Amy. Amy. I knew it ended with a Y, but that's my name. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> when are you going to have that yellow Camaro come driving through again? I don't know. I want to drive that thing Where again. So I, that's a good question. <laughs> it, it, it's back at the, at the car rental shop or the prop basement or, or wherever. I don't know. It's funny because I came on as recurring and as, as recurring Johnny, he drove a Camaro. <laughs> but contract Johnny drives a 5 Series. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I like the Camaro. I think it's a lot edgier and a lot more interesting, but the 5 Series is nice too. So, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. So, hi. How long have you been playing piano? I have been playing the piano for, let's see, well, I played from the time I was 6 till when I was 10. And that uh, didn't work out too well because I wanted to be, you know, on the baseball field or the basketball court. So my dad let me quit, but not without giving me the guilt trip. You're gonna regret <laughs> it. And, thank you. Um, you're gonna regret it. And um, of course, I was like, Oh, I'm 10 years old. I want to, you know, run around in the dirt. And you know, and he said, All right, do your thing. And I did. And then I was in college. And the masochist that I am. 20 units wasn't enough, so I decided to take 21 units and take a piano class because I figured if I didn't do it then, if I wasn't being graded on it, then I wouldn't put forth all of the effort that I that I knew I needed to to really you know get the skills going again. So I took I think two semesters of piano in college and then have kept it up ever since. So. If you're thinking about quitting anybody, don't. <laughs> don't do it, because I definitely, definitely regret quitting, but I'm so happy that I'm, that I'm back doing it again. Can you repeat the questions that I asked you? So yes. Back the question was, can I repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> See? I'm going to get you breakfast, this is what I did. <laughs> A hard time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Anybody else? Yes, hi. Hi, my name is Terry. Hi, Terry. Was it just a coincidence that they brought your musical talent to GH? Or was it something that you said, hey, I play the piano, can you work it in? Or it, I think, I keep trying to remember how it happened. And the, the best way I can recollect what it was, was I think we were shooting the Windermere stuff during last November sweeps. And we had a break where we were blocking a scene, and I wasn't in that scene, so I snuck off to the grand piano that was, you know, in the corner and started playing. And one of the producers said, "Quiet!" Oh. And <laughs> so I think that's when they realized that I could play, and then um, they just uh, decided to integrate into the story. So, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Yes. Did I already know Nocturne when I played it? Nocturne, from the moment I heard it, probably nine years ago for the first time, knocked my socks off. I, I got into this thing of collecting records. I bought a record player one summer. And there was this record store down the street from me that was selling records. You know, they had like their, their regular stock downstairs, but then you go upstairs to their attic, and every record is 99 cents. So me being on my college, you know, soon to be struggling after budget, loved the attic. <laughs> and um, so I just, I kept stocking up on these records that were, you know, 99 cents. And Cold Spring Harbor was one of Billy Joel, you know, has always been a huge inspiration of mine. But I had this goal of collecting every single Billy Joel vinyl album. And I was listening to Cold Spring Harbor one day, and Nocturne came on, and it, it was, it was one of those experiences, I'm sure, you know, 
everybody's had it in, in one capacity or another, but you either watch a movie or hear a piece of music and it just, time stops. And that's what it did to me. And I thought, well, if I ever can be good enough to play this on piano, this is the one song that I would love to play. And they came to me about six days before I had to play this song. And they said, we want you to play a really difficult piece, but pretty piece. I was like, all right, six days, great. <laughs> um, and I had just coincidentally started to learn it myself, you know, a couple years back, but it was just so difficult, you know, the arpeggios up and down. And I said, well, there's this piece that I love, listen to it, and let me know what you think. Is it edgy enough for Johnny? Is, is it, you know, too happy, whatever? <laughs> and they, um, they listened to it and they said, yeah, let's do it. So, I mean, literally like two and a half, three hours a day for six days, I learned that song. And it, um, I still feel like I still have perfected it, but it's definitely one of my favorite pieces of music ever. So, yes. Tell us a little bit about your um, day at the House of Blues with Rock Camp. Oh, a little, yes, okay. A little bit about uh, Rock Camp at the House of Blues. A, um, a friend of mine came to me with, uh, who, who works with a PR company that, that puts on Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. And basically what it is, she asked me to be a guest. And basically what this is, is people pay, you know, like a camper's fee, and they show up in the morning and they sign up as a guitar player or a piano player or a tambourine player or a triangle player, you know, <clears throat> whatever instrument you can play or, you know, singer. And they, um, you know, I would say probably 50, 60 people show up and they assemble you into groups or bands in the morning. And then you rehearse all day, two or three songs, the songs that you're going to perform that night. And it's just, you know, a day of non-stop rehearsal. It's a really never been a rock star, but I would imagine that that's probably <laughs> what it's like, is you rehearse all day and then you, you go and you perform. But it uh, it was great. We, we formed a, a band called, I think it was called The Taints, and I did not name the band. So <laughs> the inspiration behind the name, I don't know. So, but it was it was so much fun it, to, to be up on stage. I mean, I love the role that I play in General Hospital, and I love acting on the television and in movies, but really what gets my juices going is performing in front of an audience. And you know, whether that's singing or whether it's putting on a play, like putting on a play for me is, I, you know, if that paid the bills, I'd do that for the rest of my life because there's nothing like taking that journey all at one time, you know, on the stage and knowing that hopefully you're doing your job well and affecting just one person out there in the audience, but it was a lot of fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yes, Jim. Hi, um, Brian. In that courtroom scene where you got your furry thread, uh -huh. and then the camera went away from you for a second and back to you, and you had tears in your eyes. That look on your face—that was real. How? Thank you. How do you? How much time do you have to to go there and get that look, or, or is it? Well, how much time does it take to basically prepare for you know the that, emotional part of the scene? Yeah. It. I'm lucky in that I've been playing the same role for a year, so it's a lot easier for me to slip into that a year later than it was a year ago. It, and it's just, for me, for every actor it's different, but for me, it's a matter of really getting into the thoughts of the character and, you know, the what ifs and, you know, one thing that I kept thinking about that kept me going through that, you know, week long of shooting that courtroom scene, because I didn't have much to say. So, and for me, that's the hardest acting to do, is when you don't have anything to say, because the script is really kind of like your highway, and you kind of are navigated by the script and what you have to say. When you have nothing to say, it's all gotta be here. And for me, it was just a matter of, you know, the Johnny thoughts and thinking about what would happen. Um, I kept picturing Johnny being strapped down to a lethal injection table, and what that would do to Lulu, and that immediately got me going, so wow, it was it was kind of a culmination of that. that thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Yes? Um, What's your name? Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Being new to this form and stuff, mm -hmm. how do you feel working with the, the heavy hitters that you do? I mean, Bruce, 
Yeah. How do I feel? I feel darn lucky. I really do. The, you know, the fact that I get up, I get to get up every day and go to work and play with Bruce Weitz and Stephen Macht and Sarah Brown and you know Julie, the people that I work with. I'm I'm blessed and I'm very lucky and I try to learn as much as I can from them every day because you know who knows how long it'll last. So yes. Am I excited about my first? <laughs> yes. I am excited about Super Soap. I have I have heard lots of things about it, <laughs> and I have uh, been told that it's crazy, but it's a good crazy, yeah, true. from what I understand. So yes, I'm very very you're excited. Gonna sing, you're going to oh. sing, right? I, I apparently people sing. I maybe, yeah. <laughs> I may have to do that. Yeah. So I don't know if the people perform at Super Soul. Yeah. 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 They come on Saturday and Sunday night. Really? Yeah. 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 The Street Jam. And there are a ton of Bradford. Okay. <laughs> the wheels are cranking. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll sing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, well, since nobody else is raising your hand, Cindy, and then I'll get you at Table 8 after that. Okay, Table 8. That's a great restaurant in Los Angeles, by the way. How is it working with Sonny? How do you enjoy it? I enjoy it immensely. He's, a, uh, you know, he, he's the type of actor that thrusts himself into his work, and there's really no turning back. And you have no choice to take his lead, to really go there with him. And if you do go there with him, the result is usually a very nice result. So it's it's uh, fantastic working with Maurice. Yeah, I love it. Your show NCIS, the one episode mm. you did, you yeah. worked opposite Hal Holbrook. Mm -hmm. What was it like? I mean, I love him on Designing Women. Yeah. So what was it like? Did you, what did you learn from him? What was it like working opposite? It was awesome working opposite him. It was probably, <clears throat> you know, before I came into this job, it was probably my favorite experience to date because he just, I, I just found myself sitting there watching him yeah. and hearing him tell his stories. And, and, you know, one thing I learned from him was every take was a little different. You know, he stuck to the, to the same idea, to the same character choices to to an extent but every take was a little different and it just shows that you know he's 85 maybe 80 85 years old and he still keeps everything so fresh and it's definitely an inspiration to watch that and to and to know that he can go there and then I went and saw him perform has anybody seen him perform his his Mark Twain no. Show, oh my gosh! I don't know what the DVD's like. I haven't watched it, but he does this thing, and he he's been doing this for over 50 years. He does a one-man show, and he is Mark Twain. He, he just becomes Mark Twain. And I saw him in a in an auditorium called the Thousand Oaks Civic Center Auditorium, and it was probably you know two, three thousand people. And when I tell you, you could hear a pin drop between his words. Everybody was just like, this <laughs> the whole time. And he is, I would say rent the DVD or buy the DVD. But if you have a chance to go see him, do it. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. What did you do last night? <laughs> 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 I'm sure that you can see I didn't stay home. <laughs> I'm sure you can see I didn't come home early. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What's that? You were taking baths with Tony came home last night. Really? <laughs> and what would that be? Three. Three? Four. Two. Four. Two. Four thirty. Oh, it's Boston. It's early, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was sometime around there. <laughs> But uh, I uh, I went out to this great restaurant called uh, called Bank, which was unbelievable. It was 
God, if you live here and you haven't gone, go. Because you walk in and you literally feel like you're Pinocchio inside of that whale. Because <laughs> they've got the, this, this like these wafer thin wood panels that are all different. You feel like you're in somebody's throat. It's the weirdest thing, <laughs> but in a good way. Um, <laughs> if I if I if I had to be swallowed by a whale, it would be this whale. <laughs> it was um, and the food was excellent. But yeah, the decor was really cool. And it's almost like you're in a wooden cave. And then um, a friend of mine arranged for us to go to this uh, to this bar called Whiskey Park afterwards, and we had just. A blast. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, speaking of Boston, how does it feel to be in the city of the world champion Boston? <laughs> As a Boston native and season ticket holder, I know you love our team. <laughs> you know what's so weird is I hear I see the lips moving, but I <laughs> <laughs> it may be because I got home so late last night, my hearing just <laughs> escaped me for a second. It's really weird. Huh. Anybody else? <laughs> you guys earned it. We did not show up. We showed up for one game, which was very unfortunate. And uh, you guys clearly wanted it more than we did. Because you and I talked in one of those phone interviews mm -hmm. before, and it was like yeah. the first round, and we were like, Oh, you know, the Lakers are going to crush the little Celtics. Little Celtics. Yeah, well. <laughs> Paul Pierce faked a knee injury. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> yeah. My team showed up. Yours they did. Didn't. We did. We Clearly. put money on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your hearing went out too, see? Yeah. <laughs> she only hears anything that says Yankees. Uh, <laughs> they didn't do so well this year. <laughs> neither, neither did my team, I'm a Cardinals fan, and they just, they decided to start playing in like the last seven games of the season. <laughs> too, too late. <laughs> there were still 155 games and they didn't show those four. So, yeah. It. Yeah. Um, if there was uh, anyone that you haven't worked with on the show that you'd like to, I feel like I've worked. I feel like I've worked with everybody. Um, I love working with Laura Wright, and I don't get to do that very often. And that would be fun, you know, to 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 play pretend with her. What I'm trying to think is, I don't know. Maybe you guys know better than I do. Is there anybody? Who would you guys like to see? Claire. Lulu. Claire, Lulu. Yeah. I've been with Lulu. Yeah. Who? No. Olivia. No. Olivia? No, she's a little old. She's, I like her. Would you, well, when they cast Dante, will you have, you think any, will Johnny have any interaction? I would imagine Johnny and Dante will, uh, will interact. I would think, I, I don't know, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> don't put it on a blog, but um, yeah, of course. I would, I would imagine that would only be fitting. I saw a hand go up, yes. Did you have any interaction with um, his pastoral I didn't. Oh, you didn't? I didn't, I wanted to, but um, I got to watch him film, which was a treat, <laughs> because he's a character. As you know, any any Sopranos fans out there mm -hmm. will know that he, he is uh, he. I don't want to say he plays himself because that's. I, I feel like it's a kind of a shallow comment. But what I mean when I kind of say that is that he he definitely brings all of his personality to the role. And it's it's he's a lot of fun. Carolyn yeah. told us some good stories. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think she got to work with him yeah, quite a bit. So it was, uh, I'm sure, a fun experience for her. And the two of them in the same room. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I haven't heard much from the back of the room. Back of the room. They're shy. It's okay. Yes. Do you like working with Anthony? Anthony. Anthony being my father? Bruce? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Um, yes, I love working with Bruce. 
because he he's another actor that I can just stand there and watch and completely zone out in a scene and just be Brandon looking at him like you are a brilliant actor. <laughs> How do you do that? Um, you know, he has definitely been at this uh, a lot longer than I. Did. How far ahead take? You already have this. We we tape generally two to four weeks. How far ahead do we tape was the question. And uh, yeah, it's anywhere between two and four weeks. So it, uh, you know, usually we like to be by our winter break because it's really the only break that we get as, you know, as an entire show. So by the winter break, we like to have um, about four weeks in the can already so that when we come back, we're two weeks ahead. So, yeah. Yes? When um, Tony Geary's character left a yes. while back, you and Lulu were kind of just getting things going. Uh -huh. Now it's clear that you and Lulu are, That's right, are together. Yeah. When he comes back, what do you anticipate the father, even though he's a kind of a hands-off parent, yeah. what do you kind of anticipate the um, Johnny Luke? Where do I anticipate my the Johnny daughter Luke kind of my conversation daughter will conversation be? Going? Um, that's a good question. I know we haven't had that yet. I would imagine we will maybe once she's out of Shady Brook, if she ever gets out of Shady Brook. <laughs> I feel scary. like she's been there for years. Yeah. Um, but she gets to come and go when she, she pleases. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, anything happens in daytime, you know that. Come on, look at me in the interrogation room. It's like my home. My home. Yeah, come on. Come on. Why don't you all come see me in the interrogation room? It, it is, if I'm going to get arrested, I will get arrested in Port Charles because they are fantastic. <laughs> They give me cheese croissants in the morning. Oh, it's great. But uh, it's it's an interesting question that you raise, and, and it, it's an interesting notion that when Luke left, we were kind of ambiguous. Were we a couple? Now there's there's definitely well, there are questions there because Johnny knows that he needs to stay away from her in order for Lulu to get better. But we're definitely you know knee deep, ways deep in this relationship. So. I look forward to those scenes. I, I don't know if they've been written yet. We, did, we certainly haven't filmed them, but it'll be interesting. Yes? Um, you have tremendous chemistry with Pearson Storms. Oh, you see thank you. Had. Um, do you foresee them uh, at all going there with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Duck? Duck <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite game in preschool, Duck Duck <laughs> Do I see Johnny and uh, and uh, Maxie going anywhere? I don't know. She she is a great actress and she's a very giving actress and I feel like we do work well together. I mean, her her dynamic with Spinelli is fantastic. And of course, I don't want mm -hmm. that to go anywhere. Um, and I love my dynamic with Julie. But um, I don't know. It uh, some of those those elevator scenes that we shot where we were trapped in the elevator were some of my favorites because you know it was just I felt like I was just playing tennis with her. We were just kind of lobbing the ball back and forth. And a lot of fun. Yes. There was a scene, I think, this week where you were, of course, in the interrogation room. <laughs> after, you, after, you, after you crashed a boat into a freighter or something. And You've never done that? Never. And you haven't lived. I guess not. And you were with Scott, of course. Uh -huh. And it was just like he just got to you so much for the final time. And you said to him, look, I'm going to tell you exactly how I yeah. killed that little twit. Yeah. That was awesome. That, thank you. That, that, was, that, was, that was when I read that. I was very happy because I thought, oh, am I going to have fun with this one? And I did, and it was, um, it was, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you can't be tried twice for the same crime, so it, uh, it was a lot of fun to shoot those scenes. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I haven't heard from you at Table 6, yes? Great question. I have, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go further with that because I have a, uh, when I graduated college last year, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> when I graduated college, I set myself a 30 year goal. And that 30 year goal is in 30 years, I want to be able to have the ability to write, direct, produce, star in, write the music for my own movies, and then go do a play on Broadway. You know, I want to have. Um, I want to have that kind of career where I have that leverage, not because you know I want the star factor. That's all inconsequential to me. But what's important to me is to be able to 
satisfy this hunger I have to work and to express myself. So I know it's a, it's a big goal, it's a lofty goal, but it's I feel it's grounded. And as far as, as long as I take you know little steps in that direction every day, that you know I know that every choice I make will you know inform or result in that goal. Then I I can and I will do it. Mark my words. Debbie has a question. <laughs> Do you want to take a couple more and then go ahead and get started in the audience? Sure. The question was, do I want to take a couple more? <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep it up. <laughs> we have fun, I guess. Brandon, how does... Oh, I was just saying she's next. Oh. And they're inspired. Does a wife and kids fit into your career absolutely oh. absolutely yes and I I uh, am on my way Thank you. I'm on my way so yeah she's uh, the light of my life so oh. red sweater it, it it varies it um, so let's say I have I'm in six acts in in a show we generally have seven acts the teaser act being one and then six acts afterwards separated by commercials. And how long does it take to film a show? It, it varies because I love the days where, for example, I'm going to work on Tuesday and I'm doing two shows and the scenes are back to back to back. So I'll be there for a couple hours and I'll get two days of work done. So it could take anywhere from, you know, if the scenes are all grouped together, for example, if I'm at my home, away from home, and the PCP <laughs> is very Those days are very short because I'm just sitting there like this, waiting for everybody to, to come visit. So you know that'll just take a couple of hours. So it moves, it moves so fast compared to say, you know, when I did NCIS, one episode is a uh, is an eight day shoot. So yeah, it's very different. Two more. Um, when you first came on the show and Sarah Brown was coming on. Were you, what were your feelings working with her? I'm, I'm assuming that people would have told you how amazing she is. The yeah, actress. yes. Were you nervous? Was it? How did I feel when I found out I was going to work with Sarah Brown? I wasn't nervous at all. I, I had heard that she was, you know, is a fantastic actress and that, you know, she pushes the people that she works with. And that was great because I always, you know, there's a saying about surrounding yourself with people you think are greater than you are, and that's always been important for me. And I like working with people who I feel, you know, are better than I am because they push me. So I was just very excited. Last question from somebody I haven't heard from. Yes. How intense was the scene with Sarah Brown, like in the interrogation room during the trial? They were. Uh, I was tense with the the scenes with Sarah Brown in the interrogation room before the tr before the trial. They were. Um, they were intense. They, you know, a lot of the scenes are intense in uh, in, in the world of daytime. But uh, yeah, they were fun because, you know, it was that whole deal of you know Johnny, of course, doesn't want to be strapped down to that table and be injected with lots of potassium. But uh, he also didn't want Lulu to get on the sand stand and self destruct and then be uh, charged with murder. So they were. You know, there was a lot of a lot of food for thought going around in my brain. 